My name is Steve Nesbitt. I'm a professor of meteorology in the Department of Atmospheric Sciences at the University of Illinois. I have spent almost 20 years studying severe storms around the world using satellites, radars, and other observations to study storms. And I'm really interested in Relampago because we're going to potentially solve some of the mysteries surrounding why storms become so severe. Uh, I specialize in remote sensing, so using radars, satellites, and other tools uh, like that to uh, measure uh, properties of the storms throughout their life cycle, where they grow, develop, and decay, and then understand the processes within the storms uh, so that we can improve predictions and, and so forth. Uh, Proyecto Relampago is a, is a study to uh, confirm our suspicion uh, with observations on the ground that the strongest thunderstorms in Earth happen in Argentina, and especially the region from uh, Mendoza to Córdoba uh, into the region of northeastern Argentina. And so uh, we have proposed a large project to uh, U.S. funding agencies that has been awarded and it totals about a $30 million investment by the U.S. government. Uh, we're partnering with uh, Servicio Meteorologico Nacional. They are uh, also contributing uh, a large uh, part of the project uh, for the observations that will take place during our uh, six to nine month campaign in late 2018. In a lot of my work during my graduate school career, we used satellite data to study thunderstorms. And what we found that clearly in every indication that we had was that the thunderstorms in Argentina were the tallest, the, the widest, the most heavy rainfall producing, and produced the most lightning flashes of any storm on Earth. And uh, at that time, 10 years ago, we didn't know why. And basically, the, one of the big uh, objectives of Relampago is that we are going to understand why the storms here are so special. And I know the people in Argentina know that their storms produce lots of hail, um, lots of lightning, but one question that we have is why don't these big tall storms produce a lot of tornadoes like we see in the Great Plains of the United States? Uh, so we're going to bring the whole team of, uh, of observers that typically observe uh, tornadoes and severe thunderstorms in the U.S. to central Argentina for 45 days to observe storms uh, as they develop on the Andes and the Sierras de Córdoba and propagate and produce severe weather, flooding, uh, possibly tornadoes in the central part of Argentina. So we're really taking all the tools that we have that we use to understand the prediction of severe storms in the U.S. to Argentina uh, to try to understand what are the similarities and differences between the different types of storms. The equipment that we're bringing really constitutes a lot of what you see in the movies about storm chasing. So we will bring mobile surface observations to get as close to the storms as possible uh, and networks of meteorological stations that are mobile that we can deploy and measure important quantities related to the processes in the storms. Um, we will bring mobile radars that are mounted on large trucks to be able to actually remotely sense all of the processes going on within the, the clouds themselves. We'll also bring very advanced high precision radars that similar to what we use in, in the United States to detect tornadoes um, so that we can map the, the three-dimensional structure of the storms. Um, we'll also bring uh, other instrumentation to measure uh, the environmental properties within the storms like temperature, humidity, winds, so that we can use that to ingest into models that we run in supercomputers to try to simulate what is going on in the storms. And, and we'll use the observations and the models to test the scientific questions that we have about why the storms are special in Argentina. Uh, well, it goes back to uh, my childhood when I was four years old. I actually became very interested in the weather. And when I was a kid, I had a rain gauge in my backyard and I would measure the rain every day and compare it with the newspaper reports uh, and television reports uh, that I could get uh, my hands on as a kid. 
and I watched uh, in the United States this channel called the Weather Channel and uh, it produces weather 24 hours a day and I became in love with weather uh, from a very young age. I grew up in New York State which is uh, famous for big snowstorms and so actually when I was a kid we didn't have a lot of severe weather like hail, tornadoes or strong winds, we had huge snowstorms. And I became very interested in, in intense weather through experiencing those storms, experiencing uh, almost two meters of snow in one, one, sn one storm. Uh, when I, I got into my graduate school career, I got the opportunity to do field experiments in places other than where I grew up, and uh, places like uh, Pacific Ocean, in Kwajalein, in India, and uh, other places in, in North and South America and fell in love with uh, strong thunderstorms. And so really my whole life being uh, interested in storms, it's been a natural target to kind of gravitate towards the most intense and that brings me to Argentina. So Argentina is a very important partner in this project obviously and we hope to uh, use this as an opportunity to open the doors scientifically between uh, both the United States and Argentina, but also Argentina and the rest of the severe weather community across the, across the globe. We don't know uh, much about how these storms develop and produce severe weather, and it's gonna take a global team to really understand and improve our knowledge and forecasting of these storms and how they impact society. Uh, we also hope to take a lot of the tools that we have developed in the United States to predict severe storms and have them uh, implemented and customized for Argentina so that uh, the Servicio can uh, implement these tools in real time to produce better forecasts, more localized forecasts, uh, more accurate forecasts about specific hazards that we're studying in Relampago, including strong winds, damaging hail, and flooding especially. So we hope that in real time we'll be able to enable kind of the next generation of weather prediction uh, here in Argentina where people are receiving information customized to them and so they can uh, adjust their daily lives or their businesses according to these new, this new information that will help them uh, be more safe and protect their life and property. Music